um, okay. Even before I can share my experiences, uh, I just have one question for the audience. How many of you, I understand that most of you who are here, uh, seated here are all law students. So how many of you have had at least a minimum exposure to prisons? You know, say you visited prison at least once. Um, okay, that's less than one fourth of the audience. So, and among you, how many of you have spent a considerable amount of time uh, actually interacting with convicts or under trials? Is there anybody who spent any amount of time actually interacting with uh, convicts or under trials? Okay, that's like <coughs> very few hands going up. Um, th the reason why um, I ask this question is, uh, is because, um, you know, there's, there's uh, a lot of attention given to uh, G. N. Sai Baba, Professor G. N. Sai Baba, and rightly so. But uh, what is happening with him, uh, at least to me, coming from a background where I have intensely worked both with convicts and under trials, it really does not surprise me. The reason being, yes, in his case, I understand that it has been intensified because of the kind of approach that the state has taken to his voice, to his ideology and his opinion. But for all the others who are there, you know, who perhaps do not adhere to ideologies who are there because of a certain amount of conflict with law, the condition remains more or less similar. And um, if, if at all, you know, there needs to be some kind of a voice that is raised, his case is a very relevant case in, in point. Okay. And uh, one thing I'd like to bring to your notice out of my experience is that generally, you know, now there's a lot of, uh, like I was interacting with some of the students and asking them, why is it that you are having, uh, you know, this platform arranged today? And um, one of the things that was mentioned to me was, we are looking at prison reforms. It's very unfortunate that until and unless, you know, there is a very sensational case or there's something that's very drastic and radical that has happened inside the prisons, nobody really pays attention. Okay, nobody pa pays attention and which is why when ultimately people like Professor G. N. Sai Baba get in, we find ourselves very helpless because all along what is most important and what we don't realize is that we like to, you know, forget our responsibility as a society towards people who come in conflict with law. And neither are we willing, to, it's, it's more like, you know, an entire enclosure where we like to totally shut off people and literally have them forgotten and forsaken. And the conditions inside, okay, like uh, Professor Hargopal was mentioning that, you know, uh, you cannot you cannot imprison the human mind, but I must warn you, having spent considerable amount of time with uh, men and women, particularly convicts, you know it's true you cannot imprison the mind, but there's always a danger of completely breaking the mind, you know, and and that is a danger that uh, people inside have to fight against. If you look at the kind of mental illnesses that prisoners go through. No, it's, it has a lot to do with what the prison system does to you. Because once you get into the prison, it completely humiliates and dehumanizes you to an extent that is unimaginable to all of us sitting here. No. Most, uh, if, you, if you know how the entire prison system works, you must understand that even as something as simple as your basic right to food, that in itself is deprived because I remember um, one of the topmost officials of the prison's department in a conversation mentioning to me that uh, there is no necessity to have different varieties of food. You know, it's, it's okay. As it is, they are being fed for free by the government. It's the taxpayer's money. So there's no need. Whatever. Uh, so when I, um, when I continued the discussion, I said, so what about the basic food is your basic health necessity you know it's your it's your basic human right when you deprive somebody of variety just because they are within the four walls 
what is it that you are doing to the person no but that is the kind of approach that the state has towards anybody who comes inside and um, a lot of what uh, mr sai baba has uh, mentioned you know i wish we could have done a a sentence to sentence translation of it but um, what professor sai baba is going through is the reality of our prisons department uh, across this country for several ages now you know you have uh, you have the visiting rights which of course is barred by you know grills and like she said fiberglass and absolutely no human contact whatsoever and talking about the medical condition that is being meted out to him let me tell you that is something that's that is so common it's common also because when anybody is taken from within a prison for treatment outside to the hospital the first thing that the doctors tell them is you know just stand outside we you know you have all the time in the world you don't need treatment on preference and after that when even when the doctor examines that person who's come in as a convict or or an under trial many a times the doctors do not even touch them or hold their hand to figure out what their pulse is so this kind of a treatment being meted out to professor uh, sai baba i'm sure it must be intensified tenfold and more i'm not surprised by it but that is a general attitude that we as a society carry towards people who are in conflict with law and ultimately land up being imprisoned and also because we do not raise a voice with what happens inside you know that is something that we effectively have failed to uh, do and um, in terms of the kinds of adjournments and the kind of postponement that is happening with uh, with his case you know the prisons is one place where the government has effective and total control because if you look at the laws that are there in place you will understand that you are totally shut out in many many ways and you cannot get your entry uh so easily which is why when you know when people like professor j n sai baba are imprisoned when they are put behind bars you are effectively cutting off a complete interaction with the outside world and you can you can raise a lot of questions in the context of professor j n sai baba but this is something that that happens on a regular basis you know there are the 20 minutes time i would still say is very very good because that is a condition the reality is that even if you get 10 minutes and if you can actually hear somebody speaking to you from across those bars you are very very lucky you are very lucky because any of you uh, i really hope that you know uh, law students get an exposure to what the prison system is all about because ultimately when you come to deal with your client outside you know most of the time we look at them as just clients and that is where it ends but we forget that they are human beings that there is a family like you can look at the impact that that incarceration is having on professor sai baba his family one thing of course the basic rights of meeting him and having that human interaction is totally lost and cut off but his family is now also in the danger of a complete you know economic breakdown and that is that is where it's very very important that not just in moments like these when there is you know when there is something very very drastic happening but otherwise also platforms like these need to address the question of prison reforms you know there are there are several um, stories that i can uh, i can narrate but i will just give you the example of how the entire medical system in the prison works you know there was um, we were doing a uh, a major program for the release of uh, uh, prisoners on grounds of be uh, good behavior which is called premature release and um, when a prisoner is released the government does not or the department does not take the responsibility to even hand over basic medical records which means if there's somebody who's been in the prison for 10 years 14 years or more than that you know uh nobody bothers to hand over that medical file considering that the treatment has to continue outside you know and many a times prisoners are at a loss about what to do when they go out so there was this case of this lady who was a heart patient she'd undergone treatment thankfully survived the prison system 
but when she get uh, got out you know a few days later i got a frantic call from the family saying ma'am we need the medical records you know and um, when i got back in touch with the with the department they said uh, you know she's released we have nothing to do with her so i said but her records it's something that's basic you should have handed it over to her because it's obvious she's going to continue treatment without which you know it would mean again starting the entire process and without a history of your medical treatment it's very difficult when you are in an emergency situation and we were fighting against so many odds just to ensure that you know they take that one record out and give it to her on time so these are these are very very minimal things now when it's coming to uh, the medicines like uh, ma'am was saying that you know he doesn't get his basic medicines well there's a standard set of medicines that is given for prisoners for all ailments you know when things get very serious that is when they are referred to the government hospital but um, even there if they can provide for their own medicines it's really good because the department is not going to budge to ensure that they get you know good quality medicines that never happens which is why most of the prisoners really hope they really hope and they fight against those odds of food and all the other conditions that they do so that they remain healthy and have at least you know they don't they don't get into any serious kinds of illnesses because that completely means that it's going to be a very different challenge both for them and for their uh, families you know and um, in terms of how professor sai baba like uh, ma'am was mentioning which i think was somewhere lost in between that when professor sai baba is taken to the hospital the policemen don't know how to handle his wheelchair because of which most of the time he's in the danger of falling out of the chair and hurting himself more seriously you know and uh, that is a very very common thing in our prisons because no matter what happens the impression that that person has committed a crime and needs to be treated badly that is something that that's a mindset that hasn't changed too much either with the department or with the police either with the prisons department or with the uh, with the police you know so um and uh, i really i really wish you had more time to talk to her about the different uh, experiences that are happening with him but all i'd like to say and yeah uh, S- professor was talking about uh, disability rights now just to talk about the prison infrastructure um, i will not mention to you the name of the prisons for certain reasons but um, i have visited all central prisons in several states in the country and specifically i can speak about some of the prisons right here in karnataka which are still you know uh, sir was talking about construction of new prisons but i must remind you that our prisons are 18th and 19th century structures some of which have been horses stables during the times of kings okay those have now been converted to barracks so you can very well imagine ventilation light you know you you can you can totally forget about having any kind of specialized arrangements for people with disabilities even for people with all the possible abilities it's very difficult to survive in a situation like that so that is a danger um, and that is a risk with which professor sai baba resides every day the only categorization of prisoners that technically happens is what is mentioned in the prison manual simple imprisonment serious imprisonment and of course political prisoners are totally uh, are totally cut off and kept in a separate section but otherwise you do not have more humane categorization you know in terms of people with disabilities yeah those who are suffering from different forms of mental illnesses depending on the seriousness of their illness they are cut off so that others are not disturbed or as they called harmed but apart from that we are expecting too broad a category of you know a human treatment from within the prison system it's a system that that needs a lot of reform and uh, yes if we are able to raise a voice for professor sai baba's condition beginning from a platform like this then yes maybe in the long run we can talk about better prison reforms yeah thank you thank you cecilia minded of uh, brian stevenson's words 
uh, when I hear, hear Cecilia talk, when he says in his book, Just Mercy, that you judge the progress or the civilization of a society by how it treats its condemned, its, in, its incarcerated, its prisoners, not how it treats other people. So I suppose we have, if we talk about it broadly or in general terms, looking at our prisons and the conditions of our prisoners, we have a long way to go. We will now move on to the concluding speaker for today. And I'll introduce Professor Hani Babu, who is an associate professor with the Department of English at the University of Delhi. He specializes in linguistics, within which his interest lies in the area of syntax and semantics of natural languages. He has also taught at the Central Institute of English and Foreign Languages, Hyderabad. He has a keen interest in issues related to social justice and gender and identity. He has received several awards, including the Best Young Linguist Award for a paper presented as a research scholar at the All India Dravidian Linguistics Conference in 1995. Professor Hani Babu is also a member of the Committee for the Defense and Release of Dr. G. N. Sai Baba, a committee of civil rights activists, which has been formed for the release of Professor Sai Baba. So, over to you.